I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on ratios and proportions. Let me thank all the subscribers and viewers for watching my videos and posting valuable suggestions. Now this video is for my subscriber who wants to understand what happens in ratios and proportions when the numbers are not multiples of one another. Based on that, I have taken up four examples. Let us see how to solve questions where we could get answers in fractions or in decimal numbers. So let's take up the very first example which is 6 to x is equal to 9 to 12. Now in this case as you can see 9 is not a multiple of 6. But there is another important thing. 9 is to 12 can be simplified. So I could actually write this as 6 is to x is equal to dividing both of them by 3. I could get this as 3 is to 4. And now we see that from 3 we get 6 if I times it by 2, correct? So we get 6. And therefore, getting x is very simple. I have to multiply 4 by 2 to get x. So therefore, we get x equals to 4 times 2, which is 8, right? So we get x as 8 in this particular case. So now we know that 6 is to 8 equals to 9 is to 12. Perfect. So here we did a reduction and then we could find a multiple and solve the question. I would like you to apply the same strategy in the second example. 24 to 40. So what we could do here is divide by 8, right? The first two. 24 and 40. So I could write this as 8 times 3 is 24 and 8 times 5 is 40. So this ratio question reduces to 3 is to 5 equals to x is to 75. Now again it is simpler. Simpler because I know that I could multiply 5 by a number and get 75. Is that clear? And that number is 5 times 1 is 5 and then 25. So 15 times 5 gives me the result. And therefore, I could also find the value of x by multiplying 3 by 15, right? So if I times this by 15 also, I get my value and that is 45. So I could write this as 45 to 75. Is that correct? So I get x equals to 45. Perfect. How did I get it? I multiplied 3 with 15, right? So 3 times 15 gave me 45. Is that clear to you? So those two were relatively simpler questions where we could use scale factor, right? So here, what we did was we really uh, reduced or you can say simplified and then we use scale factor. Now, let's look into the next two examples which look very easy but they do not give you whole number as your solution. Now, how should we do these questions? Now, in this case, I will prefer to write them as fractions. When I say 5 to 12, I could write this as 5 over 12 equals to 6 over x. Do you see that part? And now, we will actually cross multiply. So this technique of cross multiplication 
really helps. So if you cross multiply, you get 5x here equals to 6 times 12, which is 72, right? So we can write this as 5x equal to 72. And now x is equal to 72 divided by 5. So we get a value of x which is in decimals. So 5 goes 1 times and then it's 22. So 5 times 4 is 20 and 0.5. So we get a value of x which is equal to 14.5, a decimal value. Correct? Same is the case with the next example. In this case, we get x over 4 equals to 7 over 6, and we can cross multiply x equal to 7 over 6 times 4. Now this you could simplify a bit and write down the answer in fractions. Dividing by 2, we get 14 over 3 as the value of x. So we get x as equal to 14 over 3. Perfect. So that is how we could actually solve this particular question. But I hope these four examples give you some insight to how we can solve ratios and proportion questions when we do not see direct multipliers. Hope it makes sense. Feel free to share your views and your comments. Share my videos with your friends and if you have questions, ask them. Thank you and all the best.